Bowl at a nice lucrative charge if you choose to do both of those by helicopter. The sex trafficking rises significantly during the Super Bowl. A third of the victims in 2021 were children. More than 100,000 children are sold for sex each year in the United States. 83% of the people sold for sex trafficking in the United States are United States citizens. The average age of sex trafficking individuals sold in Arizona is 14. And last year, 14 children were identified as sex trafficking victims in hotels during the Super Bowl when it was in LA. The previous year when the Super Bowl was in Tampa, 18 children were rescued from sex trafficking. And I just bring this up because we don't realize what goes on behind the scenes, but this is a major, major thing. And the Super Bowl will bring $600 million into the Phoenix economy. There's five traits of a Super Bowl team and a super church mission team, which would be us. The first one is desire. Desire to want something so bad you can taste it. Have you ever desired anything so bad that you could taste it? It's like, oh, I want that. It's right there. Vince Lombardi said the difference between a successful person and others is not a lack of strength or knowledge, but rather a lack of will. The story of desire is explained best when Newt Rockney gave his win one for the Gipper speech to the Notre Dame players at halftime at 1928 Army game. You see, Rockney was trying to salvage something from his worst season as a coach at Notre Dame, and the team was losing at halftime. To inspire the players, he told them the story of the tragic death of the greatest player that Notre Dame ever had, George Gipp, who died his senior season playing of pneumonia in 1920. Following that halftime story, Notre Dame comes back and ends up winning the game. So the desire to win after the win one for the Gipper really did work. As a Christian, what do we do when we want something so bad we can taste it? When we say we want our desired outcome after we've been to the doctor's office, the first thing we probably do is pray. And then we might go to a friend or two and say, hey, will you pray with me or pray for me? And then we might think, well, if we put a little bit more into the offering plate this week, maybe God will hear that a little bit better. Uh, we might want to do something for someone else, like bring canned goods for the people experiencing hunger or do something for someone that's experiencing homelessness. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. The desire is the fuel for success. You might get the prettiest car that the showroom has, but if you don't have gas, or in some cases electricity, you're not going anywhere. So the desire is your fuel. The number two thing that you would need would be discipline. And discipline is the practice of training people to obey rules or to follow a code of behavior. Tom Landry says the job of a football coach is to make men do what they don't want to do in order to achieve what they always wanted to be. To have discipline as a Christian helps us make room for Christ in our busy world. <coughs> discipline to, a church, to attend church regularly instead of giving in to the mattress of the box springs and staying in bed. <laughs> discipline to fast during Lent gives you more the time that you would eat to spend reading the Bible. And discipline to pray before meals, I guarantee, will make you more grateful. Number three is determination. Determination equals focus and commitment, and this will help you ride out the storms of life. It was the fourth and long play. In 1998, quarterback Tony Rice led Notre Dame to a national championship. But how did he do this? Because his passing was often inaccurate. So Lou Holtz, Coach Lou Holtz, had him put up a dartboard and had him play darts an hour every day. 
and his accuracy improved and he kept as he kept trying over and over and over and learning and learning and learning it changed his game and it changed his season determination to attend a bible study or to study study the scripture will change your life and it impa impacts not only you but the world and those around you number four is to deny ourselves or for self-sacrifice pro player donovan darius was in the nfl for 10 years growing up he sacrificed having friends going to outings he had less socialization and he couldn't go to all the birthday parties he wanted to go to either he had to eat and drink very healthily and he had to stay hydrated which meant he couldn't go drinking with all the people when they went drinking. The average NFL player only plays three years, and the possibility of a permanent injury is high. Oftentimes, if you choose Canton over the unemployment line, that means you have to choose watching films over spending time with family. And sometimes, just sometimes, you might miss the birth of your child. Last year during the Super Bowl, Van Johnson of the L.A. Rams' wife was in labor. In fact, she left the stadium on a stretcher to go to the hospital. She specifically said not to let Van know she was in labor. So here is a video of Van finding out his wife had gone to the hospital right after the L.A. Rams won the game. What's good is that he had two kids with him at this time. So sometimes you have to give things up to get what it is you're looking for. And number five is distinction. And distinction means you have to have a plan. Super Bowl teams have to have a plan. And so do other people and other teams. Peyton Manning's career had 5,487 yards passing. He had 436 touchdowns and 209 interceptions in 2012. In the Bronco versus the Falcons game, the Falcons had a plan as to how to stop Peyton Manning. First, the snap of the ball came, and then the Atlanta cornerbacks jammed Den Denver's wide receivers at the line of scrimmage. Then the corners act as if they were going man-to-man -man on the wideouts, but instead of dropping off, they left the defendants underneath and they went over the top. Manning released the ball after the wide receivers left the line. Safety William Moore came out of the center field to pick off the ball because Moore's assignment was to watch Peyton Manning's eyes. The interception was returned to the one-yard line and the Falcons' game plan led to a total of three Manning interceptions. You've got to have a plan. The Christian game plan is to be the hands and feet of Christ. As our gospel said today, let your yes be yes, and let your no be no. A church that I was a member of many, many, many years ago had a visioning group that their job was to vision out five years ahead. The entire congregation was asked if they wanted to be on this visioning team, and eight people said, yes, we want to be part of that, and they said yes to the invitation. These eight people showed up, and they met for a 48-hour retreat. They met for a year of monthly meetings. They had over 100 hours invested they brought the vision to the congregation and the entire congregation that had had the opportunity to say yes to the committee would not support the committee's hard work. This upset the people that had worked so hard on the visioning group 
because everybody could have come, but these people chose not to. They just wanted to say no to what everybody else had planned. This resulted in half of the visioning team leaving the church because they felt unappreciated. Here at MIM-1, all of our groups are open to anybody that wants to come. Both session and council meetings are open to anybody that wants to come. The technology, worship, visioning, vacation Bible school, 80th anniversary, women's groups, to name a few, are all open to anybody that wants to come. And if there are any closed meetings at this church, they are so close, I don't even know about them. <laughs> so feel free to say yes to anything that you want to have a part in. And if you're interested in the outcome, say yes and be a part of the outcome. But if you choose to say no and not be on the committee from the beginning, then respect the committee's hard work in the end. Nobody likes their work, hard work being criticized. So we started with a few facts about the Super Bowl, and here are a few facts about MIM-1. Did you know that Memorial Lutheran was originally named Texas City Lutheran? That First Presbyterian and Texas City Lutheran both began meeting within 18 months of each other. So that's how we're able to celebrate 80 years together. MIM-1 is part of an interfaith group called Servolution, and there's some Servolution activities coming up soon, so make sure that you find out what those are. First Presbyterian is part of the Presbytery of the New Covenant in the PCUSA. So if anybody says, what is your Presbytery? You're going to say, yes. New Covenant. Memorial Lutheran is part of the Coastal Conference of the Gulf Coast Synod of the ELCA. So if anybody says, what conference are you in? You're going to say, that's your synod, Coastal Conference. Coastal Conferences are all the churches that are up around the coast. ELCA stands for? The Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And PCUSA stands for? Presbyterian Church in the United States of America. All 80th anniversary activities are free. We don't want anybody to not be able to come because of cost. There will be free donations accepted for all 80th anniversary activities, and all of the donations that are collected will go to the MIM-1 general budget. The semi-formal meal was made possible by donations. So we hope everyone enjoys it. The Talent No Talent Show will include a potluck, that is sponsored by donations for the meat dish, and then the rest of everybody will bring the vegetables and the food. The comedy show will have comedians from Orange County, California, and dessert, and all the comedians' time and expenses have been donated. They are bringing themselves over from California and paying for that themselves, and all the money, money has already been sent to offset the cost of the desserts. So we are celebrating for the 80th anniversary. The five traits to a super mission team that we have at MEM-1 are desire, discipline, determination, denial, and distinction. And what makes us the most distinct at all is that when we are doing what we are called to do, we are the hands and feet of the Christ. And when our yes is yes, and when our no is no, then everyone knows where we are. And we are here to go and serve in this neighborhood, in this place, in Texas City, and the adjoining area. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Our hymn of the day is when the saints go marching in, so stand up and let's enjoy this, even though we're not from New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> 